everybody, I'm Quinn Snyder with, with DevNet, and I'm here today with uh, some close friends of mine, um, Matthias and Kalen, to talk a little bit about some of the technology that they've been working on, both independently and how they're bringing that together and building some interesting solutions for their customers. So uh, I'll go ahead and let them introduce themselves so you can get an understanding of their background. Thank you, Quinn, for having me. Uh, hi, I'm Matthias Prokop. Uh, I'm a technology director in Natalik. Uh, we're a professional services company based in the UK, in London, but we have the offices in Sydney and New York. Yeah, and I'm Kalen Arndt. I'm a senior solutions engineer at HashiCorp, and we make cloud automation uh, software. You're, you're, you're really selling it there, Kalen. It's, it's awesome cloud automation. Fact, well, it absolutely the, is. The amount, of, the amount of things that we have going on, you, leveraging Hashi is, is pretty incredible. And yeah. uh, one of the things I think that it really intrigues me is, is something that you, uh, as Hashi, have released recently, and it's, uh, you call it network uh, infrastructure automation. Um, informally, we all call it CTS or Console Terraform Sync, but there's a lot of things that go in behind that. So would you mind kind of explaining it kind of a, at a very high level about why it's different than other automation solutions that, that are on the market today? Yeah, so the way that it ends up working is uh, Console Terraform Sync kind of sits uh, outside of our core product of Console and Terraform. And it, really sits there and looks at uh, a service registry, so where our services reside inside of the network, and it sees that there is a new service, uh, what should we do about that? And so if it's healthy and it has some custom health checks, uh, what it'll do is it'll you tell it, here's a module to execute if your web server comes online. And what it does is once that registers and it's healthy, it will execute a Terraform run, and if you want custom firewall rules or a load balancer configured, it will actually execute that via Terraform and ensure that the network fabric resembles what the desired state of what you've put in there. Wow, that's that's interesting because it, I feel like, and I'm, maybe I'm burying the lead a little bit, but you get all the goodness of Terraform with all the, 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 the state nature and we can not only provision things, but we can yank them out, I'm assuming, if, if, if things go sideways or, or, or fail? Yeah, absolutely. So um, we have over 2,000 providers, so you can scale this with really any other solution. So you can integrate you know, like ACI with um, you know, your firewall solutions or your load balancers. But the other thing is too, is that as these applications either, let's say you scale them, it will reconfigure the fabric so that way those net new um, services are available and they are secure in the fashion that your security teams want. If one of them fails, it's removed from the fabric because it's a no longer healthy service. Um, or if you scale that application down, uh, what ends up happening is it pulls those rules out. So the ability for us to have that versioned uh, state and then also have the fabric reflect what the uh, living application does is a huge benefit. Yeah, that's incredible. So on that same note, we have really great technology. So M M Matthias, what, what drew you to, to starting to talk um, you know, internally or maybe with your customers about the, the solutions that Hashi's put together and spe specifically some of the CTS stuff that you, I know you guys have been working on? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so we've been uh, working with HashiCorp for many years in the past, uh, mainly internally. So we've been using Terraform and Console for many years, I would say four or five years internally on uh, Natalie platform, which is sort of our platform where we're hosting services for our clients. Uh, but we also are a professional services company, so we have a lot of clients who wanted to talk cloud and you know data centers and stuff. Uh, and uh, for the last few years, we've seen that obviously lots of software developers are turning to public cloud and you know deploying lots of their applications and workloads in the public cloud. Um, and uh, lots of clients wanted to actually not really decline or prohibit the uh, users to go into the public cloud. They wanted to motivate their users and software developers to stay on-prem. And they wanted to provide a public cloud experience uh, to their software developers. So uh, we, were, we were exploring the market uh, and uh, we you know, look at the HashiCorp and it was obvious choice for us. Uh, the, the long history we have is Cisco and with the HashiCorp and seeing what HashiCorp is you know, managed to do in terms of the operation model and sort of enabling the software uh, software developers, it was the it, it was the it was a you know great match. Uh, so what we're now trying to do with HashiCorp and Cisco to explain the value to our clients, deliver uh, some highly valued uh, projects and products, and one of that is CTS. Uh, we've been using and doing self service internally for a while. And it's been like you know great value for our internal software development team, uh, and we wanted to now replicate it for our clients. So uh, that's that's why we're working with HashiCorp and with Kalen specifically on the on the console Terraform thing. So you're actually going into customer environments and and 
trying to understand where they need to streamline or automate some of their processes and then working to build uh, a CTS or, or a hashi centric but, but leveraging some of the CTS solutions for customers directly uh, and, and showing that, that realization and time to value and things? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you know, in our presentation yesterday we were talking about the ticket-based systems and you know, ticket-based sort of the methodology which clients, including us, uh, have been using uh, in, the last, in the last few years and how it can be speed up. Uh, I think a couple of weeks ago I met the client and we did the simple exercise, like, you know, give me a few tickets and they will tell, the, the tickets will tell us how long deployment the, of the application takes. And based on that, we can tell you what's going to be the saving. So we, you know, we can squeeze from weeks of deploying the applications and onboarding clients into minutes, hours. And, okay, and so, so given that, like, okay, that's really intriguing. What are their reactions when you say that you can do that? And then what's, do, do, they, do they feel kind of sheepish when they say, oh, this actually does work that way? Like, is there, is there like, do they, um, are, are they uh, skeptical of what you're able to deliver on and then they, they realize, oh, this actually does work as, as awesome as it, as it does? I wouldn't say they're skeptical. <laughs> they're, they they, they, they kind of like, really? You know, can we, can we do it? Can you do it? Uh, and so for us, you know, this simple sort of the approach, like give me a ticket and we will sort of translate it into the CTS workflow works pretty well. Uh, and it's great sort of the, POC for the clients to show them the value. Obviously, you know, there's some challenge, more challenging stuff in terms of converting the ticket-based sort of the workflow into something like CTS. Uh, but, you know, it is, it is definitely doable. We have some successful stories with the clients. That is incredible. And business process automation is always the hardest part. Yeah, it's yeah. the technical stuff, it's easy. Yeah, yep. absolutely. So you guys are doing some really cool stuff and, and it seems like there's a really strong partnership. I mean, you both are, are working you know, w with Cisco, but working together closely. Your partnership specifically, how has it grown and what are some of the new innovations that you, you are working on jointly together um, as, that has become possible because of the close relationship that you've established using some of the CTS technologies? You want to take this one? Yeah. So uh, I really started getting uh, involved with Nutilic, I think it was what, what, probably about two months ago, right? It was actually even longer ago. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah because well, uh, look if at you that. remember on the, on the GitHub, oh, we, yeah. we got in touch on the GitHub. On the ACI provider. Yeah, on the ACI provider. So, yeah, I was contributing, you were contributing, and that's how we met. Yeah, so the, the one thing about this is that we kind of started looking at like network automation in general, and then how we wanted to take it and start doing uh, almost like zero trust fabrics with. Um, removing a lot of the friction points where, you know, where you're waiting for your tickets or you're, you're having to kind of do a lot of that cross-functional teamwork. And the one thing that we typically end up saw, uh, seeing was this, the ability for us to segment those workloads and then um, now that we're segmenting them, how can we then further that and start using things like policy as code? So we ensure that maybe uh, as developers are taking their applications and when they provision this in public clouds, they, they can kind of specify whatever ports they want or if, if there's no enforcement <laughs> there. Um, but doing that in an on-prem environment, how can we take things like Sentinel and enforce that as a part of the provisioning process and then also as a part of the, um, the console Terraform sync process and then kind of look at how we can take that and add additional technologies on top of it to kind of get the uh, network infrastructure automation story uh, together. And that's, this is kind of the, one of the first stepping stones and we're going to continue to iterate on this uh, first initial solution to get this to be um, more of a self-service type of zero trust reality. Yeah, and if I if I might to add to this point, so like you know the products is like certainly like you know important part of what we're doing with HashiCorp. We're now expanding it a little bit from the services perspective. So uh, we've been working together on the DevNet Express, for instance, in the past. So we really enjoy like training our clients and sort of the upskilling them and talking more about the APIs. Now we're working with HashiCorp on the training program, so we're becoming the training uh, partner with HashiCorp. Uh, we're working on some exciting client success uh, stuff with HashiCorp, so for us really, the adoption of any HashiCorp products on top of any Cisco products, not, not necessarily just the ACI, we're working with the clients who are managing their firewalls with uh, Terraform or managing uh, their SDA uh, with the Terraform. That's really exciting and the adoption for us and uh, for our clients is really important for us. 
That's, in, that's incredible because I know Natilic has been a, an amazing partner with Cisco, and I, I, I mean, your fingerprints over all the stuff that we've done within DevNet. So I'm excited Thank to you. see you take that partnership and and really grow that with with a, another amazing partner that, that we've been working with. And, and I, I love, I mean, personally, I love the ACI spin on it, but yeah. but the CTS stuff is just it, it's absolutely incredible. And and um, a little shameless plug, but for you know, we talked about the technology, and and we uh, we have a CTS lab that's available on the, on the DevNet website. So you know, all this interesting stuff that they've talked about, the, the developer-led automation story and how you can let services, service liveliness be, uh, the dictator of how your, your fabric will behave can all be explored within the, uh, the developer website. So, gentlemen, I, I really thank you for your time and explaining kind of the partnership and, and where it came from and where it's going next. So, really appreciate it. Yeah, thank thanks. you, Quinn. Thank you for having us.